2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. Jeremiah 
50 and 25. God has an armory. God has, God, so you know what, let me, you know how people say, don't make me go into that trunk, right? Sure. Right? We, we get scared when our people say that, don't make me go in that trunk. That's God's armory in the Bible. That's Bible talk. You got it? Uh, Jeremiah 50 and 25. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 25. The Lord has opened his armory. What is an armory, brother? A weapon house, a storehouse for weapons. Like the waster. It's in the armory as we speak. Read that again. The Lord has opened his armory uh -huh. and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Have brought forth the missiles of his indignation, meaning his righteous anger. So if God has an armory and the weapons are waiting to be used, but not yet. Give me that scripture. Right back here. Not yet. You know why? The one third has to be gathered first. Before, before the destruction comes. And that's what we're here to teach y'all. You got it? Come on. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 3. Come on. Sing, hurt not the earth. Now, you know why Christ, you know why the, the Most High is telling the angels, hold back. Don't hurt the earth. Let's see why. Neither the sea nor the trees. Till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. What's, you, what's in your forehead? Your mind. We have to seal the laws in our people's mind first before God opens his armory. Before God lets go of his waster. Right. We have to be sealed. Give me that seal. Isaiah 8, the 16th. Let's get the seal because that's the reason why the, the, the wars have not gone on yet because we have not been sealed with the laws as of yet. Right. Come on. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Come on. Bind up the testimony. Bind up the testimony of Christ. Read. Seal the law. Seal the what? Seal the law. Do you hear that? Seal the law. The law. The law. Read. Among my disciples. Among my disciples because all of us here are Christ's disciples. Are you not? Don't you want to be a disciple? I know I do. I don't want to be, I don't want to get killed on me. I don't want to die here. You know, read, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, Come on. and I will wait upon the Lord. So now here's the thing. We have to seal the law within our people. I'll give you an example. <laughs> Come up forward. Come forward. Let's get the law. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. These are some of the laws that you have to be sealed with before Christ makes his second return. Good, because good. once Christ come back, there is no Christ. Wait, let me hold on. Let me let me let me get dressed. Let me put on the skirt. There is no second chance. Once Christ comes, it's a wrap. You understand? Good. Give me that Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. That's part of the law and the testimony. You see, sis, you see how you frowning on that? You see why you see how you frowning? You see? Well, sister, you know you have this, you have to be sealed with God's commandments before Christ comes back. So you can't make wrong faces. It's either do the law or I'm guilty, I know. I know, but your face was frowning when you heard the law. Do you understand what God is saying? What does he say? I'm listening. No, no, I'm asking, what did God say? It's on you. It's on you. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertains. 
greatest unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So God is saying the man that cross-dressed, the woman that cross-dressed is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right. So now, let's go to Titus. Let's see what the role of the woman is. Because sisters, believe it or not, you have a big role to play. You have kids? You have kids? Now you have daughters? Now it's time for you to teach your daughters according to this Bible what is required of them. Because the women are the first teachers of the children. Okay? And the brothers, we teach the nation. Do you understand? So yeah, this is this is your role. This is what you're supposed to do according to the Bible. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. The age woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Uh -huh. Not false accusers. So you have to be in behavior as becometh holiness. Not false accusers, not gossipers. Read on. Not given to much wine. Not being a drunk. Because our, our women, what they say today, our women like to get lit. That's the new thing today, right? Lit, let's get lit. That's drunkenness. Read. Teachers of good things. You're supposed to teach your daughters good things. What are good things? God's laws. Right. God's statutes. God's commandments. We don't. That they may teach the young women uh -huh. to be sober, to be clear-minded, to love their husbands, uh -huh. to love their children, uh -huh. to be discreet, chaste. So you have to learn. You have the women have to be taught to love their husband. That's not innate in you. That has to be taught. That has to be taught. This is why failed marriages are rampant with our people. That's right. Brother right there, I see y'all listen. Come on up here. Is that your son? Yes. Bring your son here too. All y'all got to run this Bible. Let me ask you, what is your, what is your nation according to this Bible? Judah. Okay, so you're American black. So sis, what's the problem? What you say? I didn't hear you. So we have, we have to be, we all must be on board with this Bible. We all must be on one accord. Brother man here in the red. What is your nation according to the Bible? Uh, Judah. Judah. So now, we read that the sisters must not cross-dress. Let's read for the men. Give me Leviticus 21 and 5. All right, you want to Let's get Leviticus 21 verse 5. Right, quick, quick, quick. Are you giving it to someone going to a jail? Come on. Which one? Leviticus chapter 21 that? and verse 5. Come on. Hold on. Uh, uh, brother here. I'm sorry. Officer Gamble, I want him to hear this. I need you to listen clear to this law here for you, because you're the tribe of Judah. You know who you are. Yeah. Now it's time to hear what's required of you. Read. Oh, Leviticus it. chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Brother man in the red. Yeah. Brother man in the red, did you hear what God said? Yeah, I heard you. What did God say? Say it again. You said you didn't hear it. Read it again for the brother. shall not shave his head clean like Michael Jordan. That's a, that's Egyptian customs. That's not our culture. Samson. What's up? No, you can either put, you, you must have hair on your head. If you're losing your hair, that's fine. It's called forehead bones. But, but keep, I'm saying, keep whatever was you a have. Nazarene. He had dress. He was a Nazarene. That's different. Right. But not everybody had that. But you're not supposed to shave your head all head. No. Read on. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. You hear that? You should not shave off your beard. You got a clean face. And God says, you say that with pride. Yeah, man. You say that with pride. Yeah, man. But you know what? You, you made in God's image. Did you know that? Yeah. So does God have a beard if you made in God's Nobody image? Knows what he got. Let's see. Give me that real quick, Genesis 1. I'm talking about Almighty God. I'm not talking Almighty. about Yahshua. I'm, I'm talking about Yahshua. Hold on. Show me. Hold on. Matter of fact, give me that real quick. Luke. Luke 14, what Christ said. The so Almighty. I'm talking Hold about up. the Almighty. His Father. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. He, he has a beard. That means he got a butt, legs, and arms. Yes, he has a body. That's right. He has a body. He has a body. Yes, he does have a body. The Almighty God got a yes, body. He does have a body. We're gonna read it. You wanna hear the answer? Yeah, I'm the body. Right. I want to hear. Okay. I read that every day, so I want to hear this. Let's see if you read what understand. Read it up! John chapter 14 and verse 9. Jesus said, Auntie, have I been so long time with you? And yet has thou not known me, Philip? Uh-huh. He that has seen me. So he that has seen Christ, this is what Christ looks like. Bible. That's what Christ 
looks like a dark skinned man just like you and I. Nah. Read that again. He that has seen me, listen, nah, has nah, seen nah, the nah, Father. Nah, no, I am answering the question. Nah. Christ said, if you have seen him, you have seen the Father. What does Christ say? He looks just like his Father. Alright, now let's get to Ancient of Days. Give me that in ten. Let's see. No, no, I'm explaining. I'm giving you the answer. Christ said, if you have seen me, you, you have father, seen. Right? So what does Christ say? He Wait, looks well, like his right. Father. Okay. So now let's see what the Heavenly Father looks like. I'm answering your question. Just be silent enough to get the answer. I already, I already told you. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. This is the Almighty we're reading about in Daniel. This is not Christ now. This is, so da this is the create, ancient day. Why would he have to create his son? I behave to the throne with has a garment and he did sit. In order to sit, you have to have a behind to sit on. So the Ancient of Days has a body. Is there more? That's it there. So now we know that the Most High has a body. The Ancient of Days has a body. Give me that real quick. Exodus 33. Yeah, Exodus 33. Now, here's another intervention from the Most High because the Most High told Moses, you're only going to see my back. Bring it out. The, the heavenly so father. Where, the, where did your burning bush come in? Now? Exodus chapter 33 and verse 22. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock. Come on. I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. So wait a minute. God is saying I'm going to cover you with my hand while I pass by. This is the ancient of days. This is the heavenly father intervening. Listen. And I will take away my hand. I will take away my hand. Read. And thou shalt see my back parts. And thou shalt see my back parts. So we cannot see oh, the most glad. high face to face. I'm glad you said. And Michelle, read on. I'm glad you said. And my face shall not be seen. Come on. Is there more? Is it? Would you wait, so wait, now, wait, 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 wait. So I now, see, if I see the most high body, God is you saying if you he see, has a body. That's because that's what you ask. Brother, you're not, you're so not. So now, what, what's the question? Wait, wait, it's not a question. If Yahshua saw, if you if you see Yahshua, you see God, right? Right? Yeah, no, I'm listening. Go ahead. Go ahead. If, we'll if Yahshua say, if you see me, you see the Father, right? That's right. That's so that said. means he looked in his face. He looked like his father. So he looked in his face. We are, I understand where you're going. You no, I'm not deep. trying to go nowhere. You think I'm, you're deep, but you're not. I'm not trying to be. No, I know you, you, you're talking all of that. You're talking all that. Oh, he I'm trying to talk to you, bro. No, no, I know what you're trying to do. Is right? that the Apocrypha right there? That's the Bible. Yes, it is. The Apocrypha is in his hand. Yes, it is. It is okay, a part of the Bible. That's what I'm saying. Yes, it is. You got two different books. No, we don't. Give me a regular Bible, somebody. Give me a regular Bible. I'm going to show you something. With the Vatican. No, no, no. We listening to you. I know what your doctrine is coming from. What doctrine? The Apocrypha is not part of the Bible. No, it is a part of the Bible. They took it out of the Bible, right? Am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay, then. So we have to deal with a lot of the slave master's trickery. And you can't slave your people while using the, the slave master's language. Because is you're taking things literally. You're saying that God put his hand. It would be no okay, reason for him go, to brothers. sing. Look he carefully. No, I, listen, I know where you're going. It would be no reason for him to sing Christ see, because he's God in the flesh. Do you see that there? No, we're listening. We're listening. I know where you're going, brother. But I want you to see that the Bible I'm not trying to go nowhere. Bible. I'm trying to have understanding with you. No, I know. But, but the thing is asking us to have. Now, here's the thing. Give me Surah 21 and 11 real quick. Give me Surah because I understand where you're going. Yes, I do. Where am I going? Yes, Tell I me where I'm going because I'm going to Brooklyn. I don't know where else I'm going. You're going. What, what you're trying to say I'm trying is. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm trying to share. God doesn't have a body. That's what he you're doesn't. trying to say. Yes, he does. We just read it. We just read it. 
that's waiting for him won't get him trapped up because you taught him properly. You understand? That's the way this works. You got it? Because that's the, that's the way it goes. We have not taught our people properly. That's why our people, our children fall into the ills of society because we have not taught them to keep God's commandments. We have not taught them to keep God's laws in the faith of Christ. You understand? So when you teach your son, your son can now teach his people and it grieves the enemy, which is the so-called white man, so we can be clear. Because it's the white man that has entrapped our people with politics, with religion. Now, it's your turn to teach your son. You got it? Come on. Surah chapter 30 and verse 3. Come on. He that teacheth his son, he that teacheth, teacheth his son God's commandments. Read on. Grieveth the enemy. Do you see what that does to the enemy? It makes him mad. Because your son is impenetrable because he has the armor of God. That's right. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. Uh -huh. And before your friends, you shall rejoice because you see your son has been taught the commandments and he knows how to carry himself in society. You understand? Give me that in uh, Ephesians 6. Because that's what it is. You're putting on the armor of God and your son also. Because there's, there's a lot of pitfalls in this society that are geared towards swallowing up black men. But in order to defeat that, you must have taught your son the laws. Come on up here. I see you over there, basking. Come on up. Come on up. You got it? I want you to understand it's time to put on the whole armor of God. Because what we got to understand is in this society is war. We are at war. And when you have, when you go to war, what do you have to have on? Armor. Armor. Why? If you don't have armor, what happens? Uh, you get killed. You, you die. Just that simple. Read this. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. I got you, Crush. 
hold on, hold on. Read that again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Do you hear what the Lord is telling us to do? Put on the whole armor of God. In Babylon, this Babylon the Great, we must put on the armor. Because there are many things out here, many sins out here that are, that are going to get our people killed. So God says, put on the armor. Read that again. Put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Do you see that? Do you see why you must put on the armor? That you should stand before the wiles of the devil. Because the devil has many ways. He has many ways about it. But in order to be impenetrable, you must put on the armor of God. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because this is not a physical warfare, brothers. This is not physical. Read. white man, this beast, this place called Babylon the Great. Out 
This place is to devour us. You understand? God said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Read that again. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. For he has visited and redeemed his people. He has visited and redeemed his people. The blacks, the Latinos of the diaspora are God's people. And Christ has come to save us and only us. And anybody else that wants to save all the other nations, the most high God is going to put them to death. Salvation is only for the Jews. Right. And with that, I say shalom. The next brother is going to come up. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.